channel one and step. general goods trains um, between Carnarvon and Bob Maddock. Um, but because the main, because the LMS main line used to run into Carnarvon itself, there used to be a transfer depot at Dinas. Um, so where they transfer all the goods from the main line from Carnarvon and Bangor and Anglesey onto the narrow gauge and the narrow gauge would then come up the line all the way up here through through the wine valve there of Gallup this way, dropping off coal, um, local goods, fresh goods from to, around the area. Um, and then when the railway was when the railway was shut down, it was shut for the war effort. So all the rail and some of the carriage bodies and all this and all the all the, all the metal they could find were smelted down to make tanks and weapons and all this horrible stuff. Um, so the railway was was a land just sort of sold well, it wasn't quite sold off, but farmers and local people sort of took over the land sort of thing. So it was no reason, like, it was no man's land sort of thing. And then back in 1996, the Fustinio Company decided that they wanted to reopen the railway as narrow gauge the whole way through back to Carnarvon. So by 1997, the railway was open between Carnarvon and Dinan. It was the first leg, it was about five miles long. And we had one in the Bay of Garrett, one in the Free Eight, which we'll all pass. We'll be, so we'll be having on our train in a little while. Um, she ran passenger trains with about five carriages between there and then they slowly sort of started rebuilding the railway slowly one by one and then in 2009 we, we managed to get back into Bob Maddock along some parts of the original line. So really it was kind of more industrial use yeah, the, than the it was people just going Yeah, the, origi the original railway was just for sort of moving general goods across. Because at the end of the day, so well, they, the roads wasn't the roads weren't as in, sort of, in good quality they are now. So it was sort of horse and cart versus steam train sort of thing. So the railway was used a lot and for sort of moving heavier, heavier equipment across sort of thing. So did some people used to use it just to go from place to place. And there was there was two that. passenger trains a day similar to this that would leave Dinas in the morning and get to Pop by lunch, and then that would come back shortly afterwards. And the same thing, one would leave Pop in the morning and come back to Dinas and back again. And that was sort of the local passenger run sort of thing, so to get between Carnarvon and Weinbauer and Dinas and all this, sort of swapping people around. Uh, but the railway itself, the locos are quite beefy, sort of up strong locos um, to run the railway. Um, one of the only original locos to the line still exists. It's with our friend at Gellert's Farm in Bob Maddock, across, across the town there. Um, Russell was built by the Hunslet Company which built sort of larger industrial engines and quarry engines for the slate mines in North Wales. So Russell was built as a one-off, as a mixed traffic goods loco, so it was beefy enough to pull heavy goods trains, but also looked sort of nice and half decent for passenger trains. So it was a it was a workhorse but it had a you know it had a, it had a nice it had a nice heart in it as well. And Russell and everything else other than Russell was scrapped for the war effort. Um, Russell survived the scrapman three three times. It was rather impressive, actually, the history of it. Um, Russell basically was, uh, was bought. It was actually like flying Scotsman. It was not needed anymore. It was going to go for scrap. And some people thought this local deserves to live. So Russell lived on for many years of people's back gardens. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was kept in different railways in in back of industrial units. Um, it then made its way back to Port Maddock in 64, 1964. It was then painstakingly rebuilt with pennies. We didn't have any money. We restored it bit by bit um, into working order. And it eventually came home to the Welsh Highland in 97, 90, no, sorry, in 2000. And it ran on its original line between Wine Canard, well, between Dinas and Wine Vow. And I was about this big at that point. It was about three years. I was about three years old at that point. Um, and then, yeah. So, if you ever do want to go see Russell, um, it's at Gellert's Farm. It's in Port Maddock. Um, it's out on regular weekends, and uh, definitely worth a look. It's a very nice loco. Um, it's got a very big part of the original history of the railway. We're hoping this year for our 100, 125 gala to celebrate 125 years of Hunslet on the Fustinio. 
of that, hopefully Russell will come and join us and run, and run along the full length of the line, which it hasn't done since the beginning of the World War One sort of thing. So we're looking into making, you know, bringing it, bringing it home and bringing it, doing, giving it a good run sort of thing. So how hard was it to get it all started when you, when, you know, the, who made the decision that they're going to actually they, nice rebuild this whole railway? The railway was always there. The only thing that was taken away was the rail and the sleepers. Everything else there, the land, the bridges, the tunnels, everything was still there. So all it needed really was the rails. Um, so when the Fasinio company managed to make, get, uh, gain quite a large amount of money, they decided that they were actually going to really, really go for it and really try to re rebuild the railway. And they got so much hatred by the local people and a lot of people from a distance went, oh, we don't want this railway in our railway. Look at it, it's beautiful. We don't want big, great, big, horrible steam engines. So there was actually lots of local opposition. It wasn't something that everybody yeah. was on board with. People in Bev Geller, people in Gridvere, people in Wyvow, even people in Port Manic, they really did not want this railway back. Um, it was a rich man's toy. It was, it was an English man's railway. It was blah, 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 and all this constant battling on. And we fought every last bit of it. Of course, being, being living in the local area for all my life, from the age of about three years old, when they started building it, up to, up to now I'm 21 this year, and I've been on the railway. I haven't, been, I haven't had a day away from the railway. No, I used, to, I used to come home from school straight to the railway. I used to come home from college straight back to the railway. On my weekends, railway. Half the half holidays, railway. Um, so you didn't even need to learn to drive from I mean, No. <laughs> well, that's the first time I drove a loco on the railway in a yard, I was about three years old, and I was sitting on my granddad's lap. He goes, right, go on then. And this driver thought, he's not going to do it. And I, I blew the whistle, put it in forward, opened the regulator, and he was like, Bleh. Um, that's how you do it, yes. Yeah. Just do it like that, just, like on a model like, railway or just, something. Yeah, that's it. That's just it. did it like I knew what was going on. Um, I, uh, I've done days in the workshop, I've done days out on the track. We've, I've been out in you know, pouring rain, horrible snow, it was wintry weather. We relayed a tunnel on the Fistino this year in the pouring rain. It was like a wind tunnel. It was nasty, cold, wet. Hands are going numb. We still got, you know, in six months, we relayed the whole tunnel sort of thing. Um, but it is just dedication of the volunteers, and 85% of the railway is run by volunteers. But it costs um, a lot to run as well. Like, you know, the railway itself, the, the amount of coal just to supply the locos is a large amount of money. And general maintenance on the carriages, locos, is quite large. So every every bit of money we do through the running season, we stri we strike back, plough it back into so making the carriages nicer to travel in, having locos ready to perform through the summer. Um, a lot of people say, you know, on the you know railway, you know, oh well, this loco got a name, but why isn't it got on the Welsh Highland? Well, I, as I say, on the Dino railway, they were named after local people, Tally Essen was um, named after a, uh, a local wife tale of a witch that lived in the, in the area, she was called Tally Essen, she used to do nasty spells to people and all this, but they gained their names from different places like Linda and Blanche, they were named at the Penryn Quarry uh, up in Bethesda, and they were named after the wife and the daughter of the gentleman who owned the quarry, um, and yeah, it just sort of... The only reason these locals here never got names is that we always we always had them sort of down as they're not sort of show ponies, they're workhorses. Um, so yeah, we kind of you know we work them to the bit of bone. You know, we every day, you know, we do, on a day like this day we do 50 miles a day every day. Through, you know, through the whole season, I think they put in a lot of mileage. So at that point, you really sort of need to sort of give them the respect and the, and the care they need. Um, we spent all into this year pulling this blue one apart, giving it a full clean, full rebuild. Um, the first week she was out, she was a bit sick. She was, there was something wrong with the cylinder. She wasn't quite steamed properly. So we had a look at it. We investigated what was wrong with it. We had a look at it. We fixed it. And it happened just to be a, pla a little rubber seal had just cracked, putting it back in. So we just overdone it a bit. And it was just like a little bit more steam and a little bit less air out. And it was just kind of off it, just off beating it, just that little bit. But yeah, the whole railway itself, you know, it's one large family, you know, we've been around here for so long. People go, wow, I can't believe you're 20 years old now, it's you're really old, you think, yeah, you are. But, you mean, it's just, it's, it's a nice place to be, it's a, it's a, you know, a lot of people go, oh, it's all English men and all this and all this. I speak Welsh, I live in the area all my life. Um, I volunteered after my granddad volunteered. Um, as soon as I was older to volunteer, I was straight down, trapped, lay, lay, laying, working around the workshop. Um, you know, they... 
they encouraged me to go to college, do engineering. Um, I came out of college with welding, you know, with welding certificates, engineering degrees. Um, I, I did a couple of months with John Deere working in a depot in the uh, in the states, sort of thing. You know, really, but I always. I, so, do you, um, what do you think is going on? Well, they're blowing off, so it's not a steaming machine, or is it? Um, I don't know, but we haven't, it. obviously there is something going on. Yeah. So Moving even slower up this hill. Yeah, I suspect they are having issues on the engine. Mm -hmm. So, um, you want to work your way forward just in case so that you're keeping oh, it up? Oh, thanks for talking to us that. You might yeah. back Yes. <laughs> And that was the speaking of it now. Um, we're on the um, of the Welsh Mountain Railway. It goes between Carnarvon and uh, Port Maddock, and it is a recreation, as you said, about a, you know the way it would have been, and it is a recreation um, of that railway. But it was mainly used for you know for quarrying and and, and things like that, uh, industrial purposes, the sort of things that people would make their living right here in the in the in the ha in the um, on the mountains of Snowdonia. So you're listening to a 107 Wales, we're covering a local um, transport, <laughs> but also touristic thing. Now you can get a, um, it is very, it's pretty expensive on a, on a, on a single journey of return. It's 26.30 to, re, uh, to go between um, where, where I'm staying at the moment for a few days to, to make this programme for Rithi and Port Maddock. Um, but if you can, you can actually buy a season ticket which lasts a whole year for 35 pound, and that means you can actually go on the train as many times as you want. You can go every day for that. So, so there you go. On the Seven Wales, the Welsh Mountain Railway between right now, Bed Gallet and the village of Rithy. Channel 107.